Okay, so now for this question, this is a very juicy question on 2D elastic collisions. So um, it will really emphasize the importance of going to the center of momentum frame and the picture that I just described just now, which is the reflecting of a wall kind of thing. Okay, so the actually the suggested solution for this question, if you if you happen to see it, it didn't do it using the current method I'm going to show, and they did it via some uh, more complicated method, which I actually do not like. So I prefer this method that I'm going to show because it's more elegant. Okay, so um, a mass M collides with a stationary mass of half the mass, right? So in the, in the lab frame, right? So just have a pic clearer picture of what's going on. In the lab frame, a big M, and it collides with a big M over 2, right? Big M over 2. And this mass is currently stationary. So after hitting the mass, right, um, it could hit it at different points. And the point is that they, they could bounce off in different directions, right? So the question asks us to find them at the end of the day, after the collision, the velocity is going to be in some direction, right? But there's going to be some constraints because there's only so much energy, there's only so much momentum it can transfer over, right? It's, it's, uh, we're, and we're supposed to find the maximum deflection, angle of deflection. So initially it's moving towards the right horizontally. Then let's say after that it goes in this direction, then the angle of deflection will be this angle of theta. Okay, so this is a question such that they want us to essentially enumerate all the possible um, two possible 2D elastic collisions that can be and find out of all of them, which is the one that gives me the best angle. So it, it seems a very daunting task to do. But we'll see that after going to the center momentum frame and um, figuring out the final velocities, it's actually a matter of geometry, right? And instead of, we don't need to figure out, we don't need to try all the possible type of collisions. Okay, so as I said, let's go into the center of momentum frame. Remember, 2D elastic collision always go into the center of momentum frame because it makes life a lot easier. So in the center moment the frame question now, what is the what is the velocity of the object? So in order to find the velocity of the object, I first need to find the velocity of the of the frame, right? So the the center moment the frame moves at a velocity of, right? So what's the, what's the velocity? What's the what's the momentum in the lab frame? Right? It's m times v plus m over two times zero, right? And the total sum of the so the, the P, the momentum is M times V, right? And what's the total mass? Is M plus M over 2, which is 3M over 2. So if we take P, the momentum, divided by the total mass, right? Then I'm going to get that the center of momentum frame moves at a velocity of 2V over 3. Okay? So if I boost into the if I change my frame of reference into the center momentum frame, then what we'll see is that the big mass m is moving at a velocity of v over 3 now, right? Because v minus 2v over 3, right? Which is this v over 3 now. And the, the mass, right? The ma m over 2 mass, right? The mass of half the mass of the big object is now moving leftward at a velocity of 2v over 3. Right, moving leftward. So in this case, I'm labeling them with um, I'm labeling the, the I'm using the direction of the arrows to indicate direction of velocities, and the numbers are put over here. They are just magnitudes. Okay. So it's a matter of your choice whether you want to um, I, I prefer it this way because you can see more clearly, you can see more clearly, uh, the direction that they're moving in, which feels more intuitive to me. But if you wanted, you could have very well labeled it like as a as this one with minus 2v over 3, right? If you prefer to stick to one direction for the convention. It's just a matter of preference. So, okay, so in the center of momentum frame, what do we know about 2D collisions in the center of momentum frame? We know that it's as if they're bouncing off an imaginary wall, right? So it could be an imaginary wall here, it could be at an angle, it could be a steeper angle, it could be a steeper angle. It's as if they bounce off an imaginary wall, and um, the angle of the wall, right, could be arbitrary, meaning that there's nothing in the dynamics equations. There's nothing about conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy that tells me what the angle of this wall will be. The angle of this wall 
is set by either the question or is set by you, right? Or in this question, they want us to find a maximum angle of deflection for all possible maximum possible. So they want to find us. They want us to find all possible collisions, right? All possible co collision types. And that would imply that they want us to try all possible angles for the walls. Okay, so, um, yeah. So, once again, I emphasize that the angle of the wall, right, which 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 would affect the ang the angle at which the balls bounce off at, right. That is a that is a parameter that we need to set in the in the collision, right. Nothing about the momentum, the masses, the velocities to tell us what angle this wall is at. So, but because the question wants us to enumerate through all possible types of collisions, we need to try all possible angles for the walls. And there's a, all possible angles for the wall is a nice geometrical picture. But what, uh, what picture should we have for the final velocities is that if the, if the, if the mass m right, hits this blue point, then the final velocity has a lot of possible, um, has a lot of possible directions. Right, it can be in any direction, any any direction three sixty. Right, could be any, but the only constraint is that the magnitude of the vectors must be v over three. So let me just draw it such that it matches the magnitude a bit more. So v over three, v over three, you can draw a circle. Right, a circle. Of length of radius, v over three, and that is all the pos that's that's the locus. Uh, the the low side right the locus of all possible velocities the tip of the arrows the tip of the arrow must lie on this blue circle okay so um yeah so that's great so one might be tempted to say hey wait isn't the maximum possible angle of deflection just 180 degrees right just make it bounce straight back and um and in this case that's that's actually, that's actually, uh, incorrect because we're forgetting that we actually went into the center of momentum frame, right? We're forgetting that we went into the center of momentum frame. If we went back into the lab frame, right, and suppose okay, suppose we claim that it's v over three in the opposite direction, right? That seems like a reasonable choice, but then what will happen is that if we go back into the lab frame, initially a move at v, right, and after the collision, a move at v over 3 to the left in the cm frame which means that it moved to the right right by 2 v over 3 minus v over 3 which is v over 3 and actually right if we had chosen 180 degrees for the bouncing of the the big the big, big mass m against the wall right if we had chosen such that it just reflects the the velocity vector then we'll see that the angle of deflection is actually zero degrees okay so that is the that is a almost correct intuition. It will be correct if not for the fact that we are in the center of momentum frame and we need to add back, we need to add back this vector, right? Add back the center of momentum to v over 3, velocity to v over 3, right? So at the end of the day, right, the velocity of, one way to visualize this is that now let's go back to the lab frame, right? After the collision, the mass m can move the, the, the velocity of mass m is as follows right so mass m we need to add the center of mass frame right there's a center of mass frame moving at 2v over 3 towards the right right and there's also an arbitrary angle that i can choose this this cir blue circle of radius v over 3. So if I draw that accurately, right, this radius of 2v over 3, uh, sorry, sorry, of v over 3. Yeah. So the idea is that now the possible, the lo locus of possible velocities after the collision in the lab frame is not just a circle with the origin here, right? Now the origin is actually here, right? And it's a circle that is displaced, that has a center displaced rightward by unit of by, by 2v over 3. Okay, so 
now out of all these i want to find the maximum so so the out of all these locus of the possible of the tip the velocity arrows right i want to find the one that causes the maximum deflection and deflection with respect to where with respect to the origin the red origin over here so this reduces to a geometry question where i can choose any point on the blue circle right and i want the vector that goes from the red dot to the blue circle to have a maximum angle okay because that will correspond to maximum angle of deflection so what what would the answer be the answer will simply be a tangent line right? so a tangent line like this you see that this causes this is the maximum i can rotate the purple vector such that the tip of the vector is still lies on the blue circle okay and what angle is this angle so question now what is, is this angle right what is this angle it is simply right it follows the relation that because this is this circle has radius v over 3 and because by definition tangent means that the radius is, per is perpendicular to the vector right that means that sine of theta is v over 3 divided by 2v over 3 which is 1 over 2 and that gives me theta equals to 30 degrees okay? hence the answer is c so recap of what we did right we did we did a few things so in the lab frame we calculated the momentum right and we calculated the total mass both of this information gives me enough information to calculate the velocity of the center of momentum frame right which is just the weighted average of the velocities and with that, right, we boost, we went into the center momentum frame. We changed our reference frame such that we are now following along. We are jogging along with the center momentum, following step by step very closely, right? And now we see the momentum. The center momentum is essentially stationary, and the result of that is that instead of seeing one object moving to the other to hit it, right, we essentially see that both objects have um velocities that are in opposite directions, right? anti-parallel and they are moving towards each other and we we know from our intuition of 2d elastic collisions that before the collision and after the collision it looks as if the object just bounced off an imaginary wall right both objects just bounce off an imaginary wall and from that right we know that the wall can be at any angle nothing about the dynamics of the question tells me what angle this wall is at so if the question wants me to enumerate all possible collisions to find the maximum possible angle of deflection i need to try all possible wall angles and trying all possible wall angles will lead to all possible velocity angles right final velocity angles after the collision so now i know that the velocity after the collision in the center of momentum frame lies on a circle right of radius v over 3 right where v over 3 is the initial velocity the magnitude of the initial velocity so magnitude doesn't change only the direction changes it's as if it's bouncing off an imaginary hard wall okay so with that um we were tempted to say hey that just means that total angle of deflection is just 180 degrees but no remember we're in the center of momentum frame and so if we go back into the lab frame we see that the lo locus of possible velocities is not a radius v over 3 circle centered at the origin right it's actually a radius v over 3 circle centered at a point displaced by 2 v over 3 with respect to the origin so it's the origin in this case is the red dot right and the, the center of the blue circle is distance 2 v over 3 away from the red dot and so now from here we see that the vector all the possible velocity vectors right they are from the origin and they must lie the tip of the, the head of the arrow must lie on the blue circle and what possible points on the blue circle maximizes this angle theta right and with respect to the horizontal the angle of deflection the answer is um the one that is tangent to it and from the length we can calculate a trigonometric relation that gets me 30 degrees okay so um yeah so this is how you do this question and it's an absolutely good question to um, test your understanding of 2d elastic collisions you, if you did it in uh, another way 
is also possible. But this, in my opinion, is the most elegant, and this geometrical picture would show up again. Um, there's a question that we'll see in future where this kind of construction is uh, necessary. Yeah. So yeah, with that, that's all I have for this question.